That's Alan Livingston. He was 27. He went missing back in 1993. Has a loving family, loving guy. But he went missing three years before the first gruesome discovery happened on that farm, a skull. Again, this is all nearly 30 years ago, but the skull uh, was actually discovered on that farm by the property owner's kid. 15-year-old son made that discovery, found a skull. Some reports said that that kid didn't even know what he'd found. He really wasn't even sure. He didn't realize it's a human skull. So he actually thought it was funny. He put it on a, a stick, tried to scare his sister, right? But Fox Hollow Farm belonged to a man named Herbert Ballmeister. This is him. He was a local grocery store owner who police now think was a prolific serial killer. I said was because he's no longer. But not even two weeks after his kid found the skull, this guy shot and killed himself while he was up in Canada. I guess he got a sniff that the police were coming for him, so the police never got to him. Couldn't ask him any questions. And the skull, again, found by his 15-year-old boy, the skull led to a very deep investigation. And that investigation ended up discovering nearly 10,000 pieces of human remains. Not a joke, 10,000. They were burned, they were crushed, they were bones, they were fragments, body parts, all of them at the farm, 10,000. And they are remains that police belong to men who started to disappear between the mid-1980s and the mid-1990s. Police think that that guy's crimes go way beyond the farm. He was married, father of three, they always are. Um, and they say he liked to frequent gay bars and try to lure men to his home, only to then murder them. But advancements in DNA science and forensic genealogy, along with a never-ending effort by Alan's family, led the authorities to re-examine Alan's case and then allow Alan's family, especially his ailing mom, to get some closure in what was a freezing cold case. The Hamilton County coroner who spearheaded this project at the farm, his name is Jeff Jellison. He asked a whole bunch of families like Alan Livingston's to please submit some DNA samples to us. We, we can work with this. And if you can believe it, out of 10,000 sets of human remains dug up at that farm, 44 of them were initially tested. And Alan's body was the first to be identified, the first. Like, think about this for a second. Alan, it's his family that, that was behind the push to start the, the resolution of these cases. And Alan is the first one to be identified. The coincidence is just mind-blowing. And nobody knows that more than Jeff Jellison, right? The, the Hamilton County coroner, who is now with me live. Joining us also is Eric Pranger. He's Alan's cousin, part of the family that just never, ever gave up hope. Guys, thank you so much uh, for, for being with me tonight. Eric, I want to ask you first, how is your family processing all of this, especially Alan's mom? She's doing quite well. Uh, she's got the closure that she needed. I mean, closure is a tough word, right? I don't know what it means for her. It means different things to different people. But, you know, this is your cousin, too. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I mainly did this for her. She's 77 years old, and... She deserves closure for her son that's been missing for 30 years. So, um, Jeff, it is such a, a complete bizarre coincidence that Alan Livingston is the first one to be ID'd, and it's Alan Livingston's family who worked so closely with you to spearhead this, this entire project, to use modern science to solve a 30-year-old crime. I, I can't get over the coincidence. But at the same time, I'm still really curious about the crimes themselves. As the coroner, with those 10,000 pieces of human remains, have you been able to determine anything about the way in which these crimes were carried out and what these victims endured? Uh, in the middle 90s, the initial investigation, uh, we did have an indication that one of the deceased that had previously been identified uh, died of a, as asphyxia. Uh, we located a broken hyoid bone that kind of directed us to that as a cause of death. Was there anything else like tool marks? I mean, in your line of work, if you're dealing with 10,000, um, you know, samples of remains, there was probably an extremely aggressive process that this killer used to get rid of those remains. Do you know what the killer did to, um, 
to get rid of the remains and cause so many different pieces at that farm? They were burnt, they were crushed. A good portion of those 10,000 remains are as small as a fingernail. Uh, so it, we don't have a lot to work with, uh, but thankfully I have this fantastic team of forensic experts that's working alongside me um, to, to identify these remains. Eric, 30 years is a long time uh, to wait. Um, you, you barely look 30. I'm just wondering, was there at any point a time when you or your family members were just ready to give up this, this fight? Yeah, my aunt was ready to give up years ago. Um, she's made several calls like before Jeff was there, um, and she just lost hope. Then uh, I made the phone call, and we were able to reopen the case and get results. Well, I, I am so, um, I have such mixed emotions. I'm so happy for you, Eric, that you and your family have answers to this mystery. I'm so sad that the, the answers are what they are. Um, but you know what, Jeff Jellison, you are a hero for continuing this effort and making these discoveries and helping these families. I, I look forward to continuing this story with you as you continue to make discoveries. Will you come back again, Jeff? Absolutely. Uh, Eric's the hero. Because of Eric's phone call to me, we were able to identify his cousin, and I'm confident we're going to make many more identifications as a result. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.